Well, I'm just going to make this video as a bit of a follow-up really from the last one. I had a couple of people in the comments there before saying they might be interested to see a little bit more uh, as we work our way through this project. Um, so in the last video you saw me putting together the well, the board that's going to basically sit in the tractor itself um, con contain the uh, Arduino and all the relevant circuitry for the auto steer and that side of it. I can't do a lot more in the tractor itself at the moment for a few reasons. Mainly that I'm, I'm majorly back ordered on the hydraulic valve. But there's a bit of a back order on that at the moment, so it's not going to be here for, for I think another month at least. So I, although I can continue to put the electronics and stuff in a box, obviously I'm using that tractor every day on the farm. It's the winter at the moment and all the, all the livestock are in, so we're so it's not ideal to sort of stripping the cab apart to um, start, cause start fitting stuff in there yet. So I thought I'd spend some time working on part of the system that obviously isn't going to be in the tractor itself which is going to be the uh, the base station, or the RTK base station, which will be back at the farm. So for anyone that doesn't know what that means, or have probably heard the term RTK, or RTCM corrected, um, GPS floating around, uh, with any GPS system, you get the level of accuracy in your fields obviously based upon where you are in relation to all the satellites up in the sky. So it's able to determine its position by measuring the distance between it and all these other satellites. Uh, the problem is obviously that there is a slight drift between the Earth and the satellites. So although you can go into a field you know, within 10 minutes and get good accuracy um, over, over the course of a day, things can move. So for example, if you were in a field today and you set an AB line down the middle of the field or you went drilling or something, you were halfway across the field and uh, started tipping down the rain or something, uh, you had to abandon and you come back the next day if you went out there without an RTK corrected signal when you return to the field you'd find that you wouldn't be driving or it's unlikely that you'd be driving exactly on the original tracks you'd still get a good straight line and it would still be very close but it wouldn't be precisely the same because things have drifted in that period of time um, so the idea of RTK is that you have a fixed base or a fixed position somewhere which is generally speaking in a yard or whatever it, de it depends really on the size of your farming operation because you don't want your base to get too far away from where you're going to be with the tractor because obviously then it defeats the object so the idea is you have your fixed uh, antenna back in your yard uh, you then know that never moves so you know the exact location of that antenna so the idea is you then have that antenna hooked to another uh, another GPS receiver because that GPS receiver knows the exact location or grid point of that antenna so it's able to then obviously read its current location of using GPS versus where it's supposed to be and then come up with a correction value. So if, if things have moved four centimeters to the right, then it can say it's corrected four centimeters to the right. So that gives you the correction. Uh, you then have to send that correction from your base station, wherever it may be, uh, to the rover or the tractor, uh, the other end of the GPS system. So there's a couple ways you can do that. So you can use a long range radio, which is what a lot of the OEM systems primarily use. Uh, the biggest problem with that is obviously it's virtually limited with line of sight. You can go many miles with line of sight, um, but as soon as you start losing line of sight, you pretty much instantly lose that signal. Um, so what that is, is just a direct link straight from your, your yard base station to your tractor, nothing in between. Sends the RTCM correction information to the uh, GPS rover and the tractor. It then applies that correction to its its current location, which then corrects it back to where it should be. So you can go back the next day, even though things have drifted four centimeters to the right, for example, the base station knows that, so it sends that back to the tractor, and then the tractor is able to go four centimeters back to the left, or where it was originally, back to its correct location. Obviously living down here in Cornwall, that isn't an ideal scenario because we have a lot of hills. Our farm is really the, the yard sort of sits on one side of the valley and probably 50% of our farm is on the other side of the valley. Um, and even, even then if you had an antenna at the top, it still wouldn't cover the whole farm because of various, it's, it's a very up and down area. As is a lot of the UK and obviously many other places in the world where these systems are used. So another way you can do it is uh, over the internet essentially, or it doesn't necessarily have to be the internet, but over a network of some description using something like Ntrip which is what I'm going to be using, I think, primarily for my system. So the, the idea behind that is the same, same in your base station. You still have your GPS receiver, your antenna, etc. But instead of being connected to a local, locally attached radio, which then directly transmits, you have it connected to the internet by some means. It then uploads this correction information to a, either a local 
a local server or cache to host it on your own network or a remote one uh, such as RTK to go, which is a free service that you can use online. Other others obviously are available, or you can, like so you can host it yourself. Um, but then obviously your tractor has to connect to that server, pull down that information, and can then apply the correction. It all has to happen pretty much in real time, obviously, because it's that's the whole point of the system. Um, I've actually already got a pretty much farm-wide uh, Wi-Fi network that my tractor is already connected to, actually. I've got a bit of a network of point-to-point uh, -point links and access points around my farm, and the tractor has a permanently mounted uh, antenna on it, which gives me an internet connection in the tractor at all times um, anyway. But if you didn't have something like that, of course, you've always got mobile signal to fall back on, which these days, well, in the UK anyway, is pretty, is pretty good, um, even down here in the sticks virtually most of my farm now you can get some form of data connection um, and obviously then these days with your mobile phone just stick it in tether mode or hotspot mode and you've got basically an internet connection in the middle of nowhere of which you can then connect ag open to or whatever whatever the situation might be so you've kind of got in my situation you've got a, a bit of a backup really so hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of the, the basic concept of what we're trying to do um, so the next step like I said is going to do is actually put this base station together get an antenna mounted up in the farm and then put together a little base station that will sit in my server rack uh, in the office or wherever um, which is running 24 7 sending corrections to to the uh, the entrip caster okay so you can see on the bench what probably looks like a bit of a mess um, so this is just me testing stuff to make sure this is going to work before I go making anything too permanent so the board we're going to be using here for, which is actually for receiving the GPS signal and processing that side of things is a, um, a U-Blox F9P based uh, board from Arduino Simple. This is being pretty commonly used for this sort of thing now, really affordable for what it can do, and pretty easy to set up if you're that way inclined. Um, you can just see I've got this temporarily bodged up on a breadboard and some jumper wires. So we've got the F9P over here. Obviously this is coming off to the GPS antenna, which is just outside the window at the moment. Now a temporary power supply from my bench supply. Uh, then we've got an ESP32 based board here. Uh, so that's what's basically going to take the signal from, well, it's going to basically receive a serial output from the F9P. Um, this board itself will be connected to the internet uh, and that, that is then what pulls that data in and then resends that data onto the internet essentially. We could use the onboard Wi-Fi. Uh, my general preference, anything on the network, is if it's possible put a cable in and since this is going to be sat right next to my rack, um, it makes no sense to use Wi-Fi. So you can also see I've got an Ethernet connection there, just temporarily connected to give me a connection to the internet. So it basically comes in through my GPS process, blah, 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 off to the internet, at which point it will then get downloaded to the rover or the tractor and corrected. So really now that I've proven the concept, um, I'm, I won't go into too much detail now, it's all on the table because it's just a complete mess. Uh, but probably once we get it in the, once I get it in an enclosure and up and running, I will walk through, if people are interested, the basic setup. Um, in fact, Ublox themselves, or Ardu Simple, should I say, actually provide base configuration files now on their website, sort of one for a base station and one for a rover, of which in nine times out of 10, you can probably pretty much just load the configuration and go. Um, there's a lot of things that will probably be output that you don't need. Uh, and there's a couple of little settings you may want to just tweak to get things working perfectly with Ag Open. But other than that, they're pretty much ready to go out the box. So they're really, really simple to do. So the next step will be to get this mounted up on something a little bit more secure. Obviously these breadboards are great when you're on the on the table for testing things, but over time they're not they're not really particularly reliable, they're not really recommended for a long time install. Um, probably would actually be fine sat, you know, in a box on the on the wall somewhere. You definitely don't want to be using this kind of setup in, in the tractor itself. Um, these wires are not designed for being uh, for moving around constantly and also the connections inside the breadboards will eventually wear out and you'll get all kinds of problems I would imagine with with the signal. So I've got a little enclosure here that I had kicking around already, so we just will put it to use. Um, it's probably just about the right size to fit all these bits and pieces in. We've got the obviously the GPS receiver, the ESP, Ethernet interface, a little LCD for some status. Uh, there'll be a couple of LEDs uh, and a few other little bits and bobs, but other than that, it's all going to fit in there fairly easily. Um, I think the way I'm going to go is just to stick it on a bit of protoboard. I haven't quite decided what yet, but I've got several here, so whichever one is the appropriate size, probably the larger one, I'd imagine, looking at that box. Get things soldered up. I'll probably put on, I'll probably put on all on headers so everything can be unplugged. <clears throat> so the first thing, the first step is going to be pretty much to rip all this apart. Um, I know this works now. I've made a record of what, you know, how I've got things working. So we can pretty much take all this apart. So.
Right, so we've got all the bits and pieces there now that we should need. I think this box is gonna be pretty much the right size. We could make this a lot more compact, but we haven't exactly got a shortage of space, so that's probably gonna be the way we go. So inside the box, I'm probably gonna put some connectors on the outside of it, so once the lid's on this, it's all sealed, um, and you can plug everything in externally. It should just be more reliable that way, should I need to touch it in the future. So the first step is pretty much just gonna be to lay out where we think we want stuff, get a rough idea for what's going on, um, and then we'll start mounting up headers. Okay guys, so hopefully you can hear me. Uh, we're up in the office now. This is where I've ended up putting the base station. Uh, this is pretty much inside, directly inside the wall where that antenna pole is. So right behind us, the other side of this, is the outside of that barn. Um, obviously it's nice and dry and warm in here. I've got the rack right behind me here, so we've got easy connection to the internet and power, and it's all um, UPS backed up as well. So the unit is supplied from the rack, so it doesn't ever turn off basically. Right, we can see we've got the unit powered up now, so I've got it all mounted up in a little box. So it's just a little project box that I already had lying around, so I thought we'd utilise that. Uh, got a button mounted in the top, so that's just connected to the pin that basically puts the ESP into web configure mode. Um, so it's just a 10k pull-up resistor, um, and connected to the 3.3 volt supply, um, and then it just grounds that pin when you press the button, basically. So if you hold, basically, if you if you hold that button in when you power it up, uh, it creates a Wi-Fi hotspot allows you to configure anything you need to change on the ESP. Just power cycle it and then it take your finger off the button and it'll it'll reboot normally. Um, I've just added some connections at the bottom just to tidy it up. Uh, so we've got power in the middle, just a normal DC jack. Yeah, obviously the ethernet on the left there, that just passes through. And also the antenna, um, I just thought that was tidier than having the cables going through grommets or whatever. So if you need to take this off the wall, it's just basically unplugging three cables and it will just unscrew off the wall. Um, so you see it's powered up at the moment. Got the ESP on the left hand side there. Um, I ended up having to do some slight modifications. I was having trouble with it being really unstable. Uh, when the F9P would load up and stuff, it would crash the ESP. I found the ESP is extremely sensitive to voltage fluctuations and stuff. So what I ended up doing uh, was just buying a pair of voltage regulators. And you can see in the bottom left there now, so they're 3.3 volt regulators, bunch of capacitors on the input and the output side. So I've got one, one is basically powering the ESP and the other one is powering the ethernet interface. Uh, the F9P is powered directly from five volt. The incoming power is coming from a power brick, um, which you can see up there, which is five volt. So that's powered directly. Uh, since doing that, things seems to have been a bit more reliable. So if, if you're gonna take on this, I would definitely recommend just building your own little power supply circuitry for your Different, different components and it seems to make things a lot more reliable. Uh, you see we've got that NeoPixel strip at the top there, that's also just connected to one of the outputs on the ESP. Yeah, basically the four, the four colors and the LEDs uh, result in different error codes, which you can diagnose uh, if, if there's a problem. So if, if, it's not, if it's basically not picked up GPS or it hasn't picked up any ethernet or internet access, that type of thing. Right, so you can see I've got the U-Center software on the screen here now from um, U-Box, uh, connected up to the F9P. So, I've had it running in the, for the last 24 hours in what they call survey in mode. So when you're setting up a base station, it's obviously critical that the, the known coordinates of where your antenna is, is obviously a fixed position. So you need to basically work out what that position is. So obviously once it knows where it is, it can then base its current position and then generate the correction. So it has a facility, obviously you can manually enter the exact coordinates if you know where it is already, which is the preferred method. Um, but if you don't, you can put it in what they call survey in mode. So if you come into the uh, configuration in the U-Center, um, if you come up view, configuration view, and then come down to, uh, they call it T mode three, or time mode three. You just come down there, then gives you the option to select either, well nothing, to survey in or fixed. So what I do is set it survey in for 24 hours. So what it'll then do is sit for 24 hours and, and average out its position over those 24 hours. So I did that yesterday. Um, you can then come in, if you go view and then messages, um, and then scroll down to SVIN, survey in, you can see the status of the survey in. So you can see it says successfully finished. 
So that's obviously now generated an average position over the last 24 hours, which is going to be fairly accurate. Um, so what I've done now is I've made a note of the current longitude, latitude and altitude. So that's the final values it's come up with over the last 24 hours. Um, so then I will then come in to the configuration view, time mode 3, and I will then change from survey in to fixed mode. Okay, so I've entered my uh, current position that it's generated now after the last 24 hours of in survey mode. Obviously these settings will always be relevant, so it's good, good practice to have them saved somewhere. So I've entered them in here, we've selected fixed mode or mode 2. So you press send, that will send it across the receiver. Uh, come up to configuration, save all settings, send. So that's now saved the settings, so when we reboot it should come straight back in uh, into time mode. So we'll check that's working now. Right, so I've restarted the F9P now, I just left that plugged in to make sure it went straight into time mode like I expected. And obviously then it starts, should start outputting its RCCM corrections on the serial one. So I've got that going into the ESP, so I've just put now moved my USB cable across uh, to the ESP module instead of the F9P. Um, so we've opened up the serial monitor now, and you can see it's gone through its little boot up routine, it checks the ethernet connection etc and it's now sending RTCM corrections. So now it's uploading its corrections, so it just runs through that over and over, that's all it will do now until it next restarts. So the corrections are being sent to the uh, to Snipcaster. I've refreshed the, uh, there's a web interface on the Snipcaster that you can look at to check all the mount points and their current status. It's showing as active. Uh, you can actually click on a little map icon which will actually open it up in Google Maps just to prove that you're something like right and it's appearing exactly where my antenna is, so things seem to be as they as they should be. So now it's pretty much ready for a rover uh, to connect to the caster and start receiving corrections. So the F9P is fully up and running. I've run it in survey in for 24 hours, uh, saved those coordinates now permanently in, in the F9P chip, so that boots up now and instantly starts sending its RTCM corrections out over the UART1, which the ESP then picks up and then sends it to the uh, SNP caster from which I can receive with whatever rover in the tractor that I'm using, which is going to be the next step. Um, so you can see it's all up and running now, put the cover back on. Uh, it's been running all day today and it's still going good, so I think we're pretty good. So the corrections are being sent up there now, so this side of it is pretty much finished. So the next step is going to be to put together the, the tractor side of the situation. So hopefully that's of interest to anyone looking to set up a RTK base station uh, using the ESP32. Cheers guys.